So we recently had a chance to go hands-on with Acer's new Chromebook Spin 513. And as a quick refresher, it comes with the brand new MediaTek Companio 1380 processor, but we weren't allowed to really run any benchmarks and we're not gonna do that here. We don't wanna make anybody upset. But we do want to show you a bit about why this particular processor has us very excited for the future of ARM Chromebooks in 2022. So to show this off, we're going to use two Chromebooks. One, obviously, the, the Spin 513 here with the Companio 1380 in it. But then we also have the Asus CM3 detachable that's got the Companio 500 series. So it used to be known as the MT8183. And you know it from devices like the Lenovo Chromebook Duet as well. And though this device can do a lot of stuff for kind of a lower end processor, you'll quickly see the difference in what we have in the smaller cores, the older cores in the MT8183, the Companio 500, and these newer flagship level Companio 1380 type chips that we have in this spin. So I'm gonna show you a handful of games. We're gonna look at some actual real world use with like different windows and that kind of stuff. And you'll be able to see pretty quickly why, even at a much higher resolution on this Acer, this new chip is really, really fast. Okay, so the first part of this, we're gonna talk about kind of normal day-to-day -day performance. We'll get into a couple games and like 3D rendering stuff here in a second. But what I want you to see is I've opened up eight windows. It's mostly web apps here. Actually, it's all web apps. I'm sorry, it's I'm not getting Android involved in this part of the equation here. Uh, but we have a couple different things. I've got three videos loaded up. I've got cursive. Uh, Google Keep, Squoosh, so we're you know just compressing one image on both of them, and then a couple of websites, Chrome Unbox and The Verge. And I think that gives uh, an adequate uh, view of what a normal kind of work setup would be. I mean, obviously these aren't things I use for work, but there's enough going on here that's it's taxing both of these. Both video, or all three videos are the same, same resolutions, all that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of really comparing apples to apples here. And you're gonna see pretty quickly as soon as I start uh, getting out of this overview mode, the uh, struggle that this particular device is gonna end up having uh, as we move through a few things. And right now it's not horrible. Uh, you're starting to see some, yeah, it's already kind of reloaded this uh, Chrome box here. And as it starts to do a couple other things in the background, we're really gonna run into some issues. Here it comes. Uh, and even as I was setting this up, we, were, we waited a good five, six seconds for one window to come into focus. Um, it's doing better now uh, than it was a second ago, but where we're probably going to see issues is where I actually go to do something. Come on. There it comes. So I'm actually going to change the compression on this, the quality on this, and then you can see it now it has become unresponsive. Now when it finishes this task, it'll go back to what it was doing, but it's really starting to have some issues here. Now let's compare that over here where I've got all the same videos running. I'm going to jump in and out. And pay no attention to that weird animation. That's a Chrome OS bug uh, that hopefully will get fixed pretty soon. Uh, right now in overview, when you click a window, a lot of times it's animating upwards for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but as you can see, I can move kind of freely through all these windows. And I'll jump in here and uh, this is actually a higher res uh, image here in this squoosh uh, and no issues here. Um, we can jump in and out of keep notes multitasking as a breeze here. And hopefully this is kind of indicative of what you would do on a daily basis as you're working. You're gonna be moving in and out of things that are loading over here and doing something over there. And you don't want to have to stop every time something's working before you move on to some other task. And what we're seeing in this device over here with the Companio 1380 versus the 500 series over here, is just a much better uh, ability to handle multiple tasks, to handle higher resolution, to handle most things that you're going to do on a Chromebook and not really have to think about performance. And I can tell you just anecdotally for me, even plugging this into a widescreen quad HD monitor at the same time while doing this sort of work, no issues whatsoever. You can't even think about starting to do that with something like this. So it's a huge step up uh, from what we've had from MediaTek so far. All right, so now we'll move on to a few games. And to be fair, the Companio 500 series has been pretty good with uh, gaming, like Android gaming. Uh, there are some titles on it that run way better than, honestly, it feels like they deserve to. So I've always been really impressed with it. But you're going to see a separation here as well. So I've, I've got a couple different games I'm going to show you. The first one is Ultimate Golf. This one does do some 3D rendering, but it's limited. You know, you only see like one hole at a time. So it's not it's not animating or having to render in this huge, uh, huge scape of graphics here. It's just kind of really simple. But I'm going to show you. You can see everything moving at a nice quick frame rate. Everything's uh, nice and smooth. And it's important, this is a game of timing, so you have to time up your shots 
to try to hit these perfect shots. So if there's these glitches and stutters, which I've seen on lots of Chromebooks, it's really hard to hit a good shot here. So I'm gonna move now over to this one and hopefully you can kind of see it. Uh, I don't know if the frame rate's on, on there picking it up, but immediately I can tell, you know, it's, it's a little jittery in its frame rate. And you can even see as the ball moves around here, it's a, it's a little jittery. Um, I'm gonna try to get this. And it's a little delay as I release the shot as well but it's rendering in decently. The game is doing a decent job of not rendering things in nearly as crisp. And again, it's just 1080p versus Quad HD, uh, but you can tell a lot of the details are less on this, but this is a simple game. There's not a whole lot going on, uh, but even then I can tell a little bit just on the, the animations here that this is just not, uh, not as high of a frame rate on this, even a simple game, and I'm gonna miss this on purpose. I just wanna see things roll. Again, it's doing better than it was doing earlier, uh, but ultimately you can easily see the difference between the quality of, of even a simple game like this uh, on the newer MediaTek versus this older version. All right, so this is a much more demanding title called Creative Destruction. It started as a Fortnite clone, basically. Uh, still kind of remains that to this day, but it always installs on Chromebooks, so I never have an issue of uh, not installing, like PUBG New State, for instance. It, it'll show up on random Chromebooks. It actually works on the Acer down here, uh, and I'll show you it really quickly to end this video. But the, the, the good thing about this one is it, it has enough stuff going on in it that it's really gonna press and push uh, any device that it runs on. And so it lets me actually set things to ultra on graphics and ultra on frame rate. So that's gonna be a good uh, benchmark because I can set the graphics the same on both of these. And as soon as it lets me into the lobby here, you're gonna be able to see kind of some of the struggles we're gonna get into on this. And again, you don't buy a lower end Chromebook and expect to run everything on ultra graphics and ultra frame rate and expect it to work well. I mean, the game looks good. I mean, the, the graphics render in pretty well, but you're gonna see pretty quickly like some pretty big stutters where it stops and just will lag from time to time. Uh, and, and I can tell you in gameplay, like you can already tell like the frame rates are really, really lagging to move uh, the character around the screen here. And so you get into gameplay where you're in a, you know, uh, fight with somebody and trying to move and get out of the way and shoot them, obviously you run into a lot of issues. So you'd have to crank down the, the settings way down to low, kind of let everything look a little bit more grainy so that those frame rates stay up and you can actually move fast enough to get anything done. Okay, so we're loading up uh, the exact same game. I've got uh, ultra settings going on here for this one too. And as you can even tell right here in the lobby, uh, everything is really, really smooth. Frame rates are really good. Um, and once we jump in here and I can move around just a little bit, what you'll probably pick up on hopefully is just the smoothness. And I mean, I can just, there's a responsiveness under my thumb that's really nice. Uh, so things move nice and quick. Um, you can see even as I pan around and move throughout uh, the space here, everything is very responsive. I can kind of track everything with my eyes as I make quicker movements, which again, is just going to make you better at playing a game. And it's what you expect, you know, when you buy a higher end flagship device. Uh, when we start talking about this MediaTek Companion 1380, again, I can't tell you exact uh, benchmarks on it, but what I can show you is that if it runs games this well, if it does multitasking stuff this well, who cares what benchmark numbers we put on anything? It just means that it's fast and it's working well and it's gonna be a device that you can consume stuff like this on and play games on or you can actually get work done on. And again, as we've loaded in the full world here, uh, frame rates remain nice and smooth. I'm gonna jump, usually the, the spot where a lot of these games start to kind of fall apart is when you start jumping out and there's all kinds of characters to render and where are they going, what this doing? no problem here. I mean, this is running super duper smooth, again, at a higher frame rate, at a higher uh, resolution than the the CM3 detachable is running, and it just is keeping its cool and just doing its thing here. So it's really, really impressive. And this isn't even final you know, hardware and software here. Uh, this is all pre-production. So this is all just slotted to get better before this thing launches in June. So this is, this is really, really impressive. All right, so to close things out, here's PUBG Mobile. Uh, it's not PUBG New State. I wanted to show you PUBG New State, but there was an update and I think they've already closed the loop because this particular device wasn't, I guess, on their list of saying, uh, hey, this is a Chromebook. We don't need to be uh, running on a Chromebook because they just don't run on Chromebooks just yet. But here's PUBG Mobile running, obviously very smoothly. 
And PUBG Mobile has always been one that just doesn't run well at all on Chromebooks. It'll run, it just never runs well on this thing. Obviously the frame rate's really nice here. I don't have any of my buttons set up, but as you can see, things look really nice and smooth, uh, just like you would expect on this processor with uh, the, these capabilities. But guys, we just wanted to show you uh, what was capable with this new, new processor at this point. And, and it's specific to this point right now because Honestly, this thing's only going to get better before it launches. Uh, we hope to see it in a handful of other Chromebooks. I honestly hope to see this particular processor uh, in something more like the form factor of the CM3. Maybe not that small, but uh, you know, just a, a detachable, uh, something that I can take and consume content on, but also plug in and get work done on too, because this processor is the real deal. But guys, that's it for this one. If you like this video, uh, head down there and give us a thumbs up. Be sure and subscribe and make sure also to hit the notification icon if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.